Hello everyone. Welcome to this Midas NFX 2013 release webinar. Uh, I'm Cyprin. So we'll talk during this webinar about these six uh, points. First of all, why NFX? And secondly, what is Midas NFX? Then we'll come to the most interesting parts about the new features of Midas NFX 2013. And we'll We'll show you also what is coming next, uh, a few project applications, and we'll talk also about the next events we have prepared for you. Uh, before beginning, I have one slide to explain again the basics of uh, CAE analysis. So why do we need CAE analysis? Uh, from the beginning, it begins with your model that you want to test, you want to get uh, the results on it. So you draw a CAD model of it, but the thing is the CAD is just a design, so you need to use a CAE software to analyze the model and to get the engineering knowledge uh, out of it. So this is why you need a CAE software in which you can perform drop tests, crash tests, cooling tests and a lot of other types of analysis. And the advantage of CAE and CAD together is that you can test a lot of prototypes and you don't lose money uh, by doing a lot of uh, laboratory tests on your model. So finally you get your prototype with uh, not physical tests but with, exper with uh, computer testing. So this is the main advantage of CA. Okay, now let's talk about the two main workflows in Midas NFX. When we created Midas NFX. The first um, thing we thought about are the CAD designers because we want, really wanted to improve the workflow of CAD designers. So the advantage of Midas NFX is that the workflow is really simple and just by importing the CAD models with minimum operation they can get fast analysis and results. And the, really what is good is that you don't even need to assign again all these boundary conditions and loads. You can directly, if you modify your CAD model, drag and drop all that on your new model and get the result as well. So you can draw the report automatically and this workflow made the, the workflow of the CAD designer very efficient. But there's also one other uh, very important workflow is the workflow of the CAE analysts because what we want to do with NFX is to uh, to give a good software to CAD designer but also to CAD CA analyst. So it is a software which plays on the two uh, ranges. And CA analyst needs something really uh, more complete than a simple uh, software for CAD designer. It needs something very professional with a lot of advanced features. So Usually, the CAE analysts have very complex models with a lot of parts uh, and to perform very efficiently the analysis, they need a lot of tools which uh, need to simplify the work. So it can be, for example, the simplification uh, of the holes, uh, automatic simplification, for example, so all the small holes which you don't need, you can remove them. It can be the same for the fillets, so all these small fillets which make the meshing really bad can be removed also automatically. Or it can be the auto contact feature. If you have, let's say, 700 parts in your model, this auto contact is very useful. So you don't have to assign one by one the contacts between all these parts. Just in two clicks you have all that. Uh, otherwise, it will take one week to assign every, every contact between the parts. Now, what is really good about Midas NFX is that it's an all solution in one interface. So, all these analyses are in the same interface, in the same software. Don't need to add uh, different modules. So, you can perform linear static analysis, uh, model analysis, buckling analysis, uh, as well as nonlinear static or quasi-static, linear uh, dynamic analysis, CFD, 
composite analysis, heat transfer, and a lot more, like fatigue analysis, nonlinear buckling, and even nonlinear explicit or implicit, which has been added in the, this new version. So we'll talk about that right after. And CFD. So uh, for those who really want to perform CFD, for example, you know that we are the only software who integrates CFD and structural analysis in one interface. Now, what is NFX? Well, as I told you, what we want is to provide a tool which is efficient for designers as well as for analysts. So, as these two workflows are quite different, we decided to make two modes in NFX. One is called the designer mode, in which the workflow is really easy. So, just importing a CAD model and applying the loads, meshing and getting your results very uh, fast, fastly. The other one is analysis mode, which provides all the features of advanced analysis software. So you can do any type of mesh, any type of uh, manual meshing or manual uh, modelization also. Uh, anything can, can be done. Something NFX is also very efficient is the analysis of large assembly quickly. So if you have a big assembly like that of more than 100 parts, but I believe this is not even a very big assembly. Sometimes you have bigger model than that. You just have to use the automatic contacts to, uh, to assign on all the parts. You can use the simplification too. Then hybrid meshing make uh, the meshing very fast. Uh, so you can see on these parts, it all, only took 180 seconds. And linear static analysis here, which was performed on 32 bits computer with only 3 giga of RAM, so it's a laptop. Uh, all that was performed in 250 seconds. So uh, you can really perform any kind of complex analysis on your own laptop with NFX. It's really fast. Here, it's uh, the 32 bits is just an example, but uh, if you have 64, of course, NFX is also compatible. Now, a good thing is the meshing of NFX, which is very fast, and the quality is really good. So, we don't only provide tetrahedral mesh or second-order tetrahedral mesh. We also have something called hybrid meshing. So, hybrid meshing provides um, tetrahedral and hexahedral at the same time, and all that is automatic, and the two types of mesh are linked together with a pyramid element. So it has two advantages. The one is uh, it shortened the analysis time, and the other one, it improved the analysis results because of the presence of these hexahedral elements. Now, some tool that the advanced user always needs is the mesh quality checking so especially if you're doing a CFD analysis, um, sometimes you have a model like that, so you think that the, the mesh is very good, so let's perform the analysis. But actually, when you check the aspect ratio, you see inside the model, you have uh, some bad mesh which are, let's say, hidden inside. So this kind of feature helps you really to, to see where are these bad meshes and how you can remesh. Okay, this was just to show you uh, an overview, let's say, of what you can do with NFX, but it's very difficult to show you everything like that. So, right now we'll focus on something uh, which is more interesting because we are talking about the release of the new NFX 2013 today. So, we'll talk about what are the new features which have been integrated this year. So, the first one uh, the first improvement, let's say, in this new version is the large scale models. So the graphic uh, processor of NFX has been improved a lot, and now it's much faster to load very big models uh, and to perform analysis on it. So you can see all these models, uh, more than 1,000 parts, so it's not a small model. Uh, all that has been made quicker, and if you have used Midas NFX 2012, you will see the difference. Now, a second thing 
uh, second feature for the CAD designers is the analysis wizard that we added uh, in order to make the analysis process more simple for the people who are learning the software. So just by following, so this analysis wizard is available for linear static model, buckling and heat transfer analysis for the moment. So just by following these few steps, uh, defining your analysis type, importing your CAD model, defining the material, uh, then the load and the boundary condition, then you just run the analysis and got your results. So it's very easy, six steps uh, to get your uh, analysis done. Now another very uh, powerful feature is the cleanup feature or the simplification feature which has been improved also. So uh, before we only provided remove hole and fillets automatically. Right now we have another uh, we added merge face and uh, remove face and uh, lines. So on a CAD 3D CAD model you can directly merge the small faces on the CAD model uh, which is very useful because uh, I, I thought, especially for CFD, because uh, you need very accurate mesh and uh, clean meshing. So this uh, this has been improved a lot. Now we'll go on one of the big improvements, which is the mid surface extraction. So there's three types of extraction for this mid surface: semi-automatic, automatic, and manual. And I will uh, lend the hands to Piotr to show you how this uh, works in Midas and effects. Okay, hello once again. So first, let me explain how does the new mid surface command works. So generally speaking, this tool generates a surface between pairs of selected faces. So, um, and this feature will be widely used, especially when you want to simplify your geometry according to 2D modeling. So Midas NFX offers um, following options um, related to extraction of mid surfaces. So now let me show you very simple geometry, and this is a sheet metal, and let me introduce you automatic options. So uh, now I'm clicking on the, on the shape and clicking on apply it. And you see it's done. So the mid surface has been generated very quickly. And this option is dedicated for solids with constant thickness, mostly, uh, like sheet metals. And, but if you want to try this function on more complicated uh, geometries, you can use it also. But of course, in everyday practice, you will need more complicated shapes so, uh, so that's why semi-automatic option would be better choice. So now let's take a look on the second example. So you see on the screen some simple bracket. And now I'm selecting the external surfaces of this bracket. So let's uh, click on the rib and let's click on the bottom faces. If we go to the preview button, so I'm doing this right now, uh, we can preview the result of mid surfacing generation. So as you see, everything looks fine. So I'm going to click OK. And mid surface model has been generated. Uh, there is one thing I want to add to this function. So after extraction, all of generated faces has got imprinted curves. And this is very important because if we go to the mesh, and let's say we generate a mesh, so now I'm selecting all, this, all of the surfaces and I will generate a mesh for you. Okay, so you see that. And as you see, if, if you create an, uh, the mesh on generated mid surfaces, we will see that mesh has got the same CD. So the nodes are already, already merged and it will um, lead you to uh, uh, shorter the generation Time. So, thanks to this comment, we will be able to create lighter models more effectively. So, lighter means uh, in some cases you will use shell elements instead of solids, and this will lead to obtain shorter analysis times with the acceptable level of accuracy. 
So actually, that's all. And let's go back to the presentation at this moment. OK, thank you very much, Peter. So after this mid extraction, what we added to, to NFX 2013 is the CRIP material models. Uh, so NFX now can consider this with three different uh, types of models, so empirical, empirical low or input from the table. Another uh, improvement is the radiant heat transfer analysis, so heat transfer with radiation. Uh, before, the analysis time was 46 seconds for such a model, but all that has been improved to 3.9 seconds. So there's an improvement of the analysis speed of 90% on uh, heat radiation analysis. Now let's go to another very, very big improvement of NFX 2013, which is the integration of implicit nonlinear dynamic analysis. Uh, we already had explicit nonlinear dynamic, but right now this uh, inclusion of implicit makes it even more uh, easy to analyze nonlinear dynamic models. So Piotr will show you again in the software how this uh, works. Okay, thank you, Sakhan. So let's take a look on the, the implicit dynamic analysis. Uh, Midas Analytics has got a capability, as you remember, to handle a wide variety of dynamic problems. So just to remind, 2012 version of NLX was equipped in nonlinear dynamic analysis feature with an explicit method for obtaining numerical solutions. So now we want to introduce to you a second method, which is called implicit. And this method is also widely used for the same group of problems. Uh, the main difference of these two methods, uh, and let's say now I will neglect the theory, is the time scale of the solution. So in this explicit method, we are using smaller time steps since it is conditionally stable. And this means that the time step has to be less than a certain critical time step, which depends on the smallest element size and material properties. And just to remind, explicit is non-iterative method. New method, implicit, is unconditionally stable method and iterative. So this makes implicit more efficient for solving slow speed dynamic problems. So when the solution time spans a period of time considerably longer than time of wave propagation through the element, implicit method is usually a better choice. So class of problems covers most uh, structural dynamics uh, problems and no such modifications are needed to the implicit method. So let's take a look on the example. So as I said, the procedure for the model preparation is actually the same as for the linear or nonlinear explicit dynamic. Uh, so uh, usually you, uh, you need to define some time varying load. And now I'm opening the analysis case. So I'm going to edit and di this dialog box appears and I will show you how does the model setup looks like. So as you see, we can create several, uh, several uh, subcases depending uh, on your need. So in this case, I'm using a simple impact model, which includes two subcases, free drop and, and impact. So now let's enter to the subcase control. And setup procedure is very simple and similar to the model in static. Uh, all we have to do is specifying the time duration and number of time steps. And also, if you want to consider non-linearities like material or geometrical non-linearities, you have to check this option. OK. Let, let's click OK. And let's perform the analysis. Okay, so one of many improvements in new version of NFX is the interactive graph. So you see that on the screen at this moment. And this graph will appear automatically when nonlinear solution is performed. So it could be nonlinear static, dynamic, uh, or nonlinear heat transfer. And this tool will be very helpful for monitoring convergence during solution phase. So we can follow up maximum 
displacement and this is global time so you see this at this moment maximum rotation or even temperature let's wait a few seconds uh, to get the results from the second subphase so I think 15% of the second subphase and up so I'm going to start the solving process now I'm closing the non linear graph and I'm going back to our model so let's play the animation I'm going to result that and setting um, setting up the deformation scale to real and let's display the results for surface B. So you see actually the response of the simple system and this is a typical example of the implicit analysis. Okay, this model um, was subjected to gravitational loading and now um, I think we can present some application examples. So implicit analysis is very powerful in many industrial areas. So let me show you two examples. This example um, depicts metal forming simulation. So let's play the animation so you can see this. And we used a nonlinear material in this model so we are able to investigate plastic pressure strains uh, of course if you want and this and the second example uh, shows us a structure which is called the deflector and this is an application example from civil engineering so in this model we used many features like nonlinear material surface to surface contact uh, also we used all of the types of elements like fit elements surface elements and one dimensional elements to connect all of them. Okay, so um, we are going back to the presentation at this moment. Okay, thank you, Peter. Um, I think the graphics are a bit slower than the, the world, so I'll try to be a bit slower. Okay, so this was the presentation about the implicit nonlinear dynamic, and now we'll go to the next improvement uh, to NFX 2013, which is the transient nonlinear heat stress analysis. So this kind of analysis is basically uh, the application of the heat load on a nonlinear static or quasi-static analysis. So previously, NFX could only consider the linear heat stress analysis. Right now, what we have done is that um, we have combined two types of analysis, the transient heat transfer analysis and the nonlinear static uh, analysis, which, uh, so it makes, you, the step one is to apply the transient heat stress, heat transfer, then the temperature is extracted by the time period, then the temperature is applied to create the heat stress and then the nonlinear analysis is performed. So all that is performed automatically. And this is called transient nonlinear heat stress analysis. So as the small animation that uh, is here, which is a line heating, uh, line welding. So you see Piotr will show you the same model uh, right in the NFX. Okay, let's take a look on another type of analysis which has been implemented in new 2013. So this type of analysis, which is called nonlinear transient thermal stress, combines two types of analysis, nonlinear transient heat transfer and nonlinear quasi-static analysis. Using this type of analysis, we are able to investigate stresses or strains and, of course, deflections, which comes from temperature loading in the time domain. So on the screen, you see this uh, simple example of line heating. So to prepare this type of analysis, you need to specify temperature-dependent parameters in the material cut. So you see this on the screen at this moment, so you have to specify some time-dependent elastic modulus, position ratio, density, and of course thermal parameters. 
And now let's take a look quickly on the results. So I'm going to activate the results and I will show you the temperature changing during the line ticking. So this is the first group of the results. And as you see, the output consists also of two types of results. So we receive the thermal results and nonlinear results. And at this moment, you see the temperature distribution uh, according to the line heating. And let's display the, the deflection which we obtain after the temperature heating. So now I'm going to display total translation control and we are able to investigate deflection from heat transfer analysis. Okay, <laughs> thank you, Piotr. Let's come back to the slides. Okay, so this was the transient nonlinear heat stress analysis. Now, NFX can uh, handle a lot of different types of analysis and all that helps you to uh, test your model for stiffness, resistance or durability, as well as thermal fluid analysis or uh, dynamic noise or motion analysis. So you have here a kind of resume of all the features in uh, uh, the analysis types which are provided in NFX. So it's really huge in one, uh, one unique interface. But what we also have is something uh, to optimize your design. So we, only pro we don't only provide the things to analyze, but also to optimize the design. And right now in NFX 2012, we had topology optimization. Now in 2013, we added a new type of optimization, which is size optimization. So we'll talk about how uh, these two types of optimization work right now. The first one, which is called the topology optimization, works um, by defining first a design area uh, on your model. So you want to know what uh, should be the shape of your design in this area. And the software helps you to design this by calculating the, the density of material which is required at certain area depending on the load and the boundary condition and also the requirements you input in the software. So it calculates the shape and then helps you to generate a new model and mesh it automatically. And then you can test this design on uh, NFX. So it's also possible to add some uh, design condition optimization uh, on that. Okay. Now let's uh, let's hand uh, the presentation to Piotr who will show you how it works directly into it. So, as you remember, uh, MIDAS NFX 2012 introduced topology optimization. Uh, so this kind of optimization is actually the process of removing material from a part uh, while preserving its performance and resulting in higher designs which comply with performance and manufacturing requirements. So on the screen you see uh, some example of utilizing this feature. So this model is subjected to force loading which is applied at the middle of the block and the second loading is the gravity. If you go to the mesh, I would like to introduce to you this mesh set. So we, the, this model is divided into two sections. First section is the design section. This is the and non-design section and this section has been displayed at this moment. Okay, so uh, the design constraint for this model was a reduction of the volume about 12%. So let's go uh, to the results and let's display the material density. In this analysis actually we're trying to, to optimize the bridge model. So this is the purpose. Yeah, this is the purpose. So we have to wait a few seconds to display the results. Okay, so let's take a look, look more deeply in this uh, result. So I'm going to update model. Now you see topology optimization dialog box has been um, 
appeared. So we can use this slider to display what's happening inside our model. So as you see, we received nice contour of the bridge. And actually, if we want to save this optimized mesh, we can go to this option, to the result mesh, and we can change, uh, and we have to set up the mesh size and press OK. So also, export to STL file is available. So this is a simple example of the topology optimization, and now Sapien will uh, give us a little introduction to the size optimization. Mm -hmm. OK, thank you very much, Piotr. Uh, so as you saw, uh, if you want to design a bridge, you only need to put the constraints where the bridge is uh, fixed, the loading on the main span, and the topology will give you the shape of the bridge. So this is really uh, amazing. But it doesn't stop here. Uh, this is topology optimization. Now I will talk about the new type of optimization added in uh, NFX 2013 which is the approximate model uh, based on size optimization. So size optimization works in a bit different way. It is actually working with uh, the optimization of properties which are assigned to your mesh set. So if you are using 2D mesh, for example, you have a property which is assigned to this mesh, which is the thickness of the, the plate, for example. And this thickness can be optimized automatically by NFX to tell you what should be uh, the, the, the good thickness to fit your uh, requirements. requirements. So you have a small example here. Uh, you first fit the design area, then optimize the model. And for, you have a parameter modeling, so you choose different uh, plates and then you perform the size optimization. So you have also a lot of uh, parameters like the sampling, so you can take different sample for the, the size and then perform the size optimization, so it, it will tell you which one is the best. Okay, now let's show you that uh, into an effects. So we'll hand to Peter again. OK, so now let's perform uh, size optimization analysis. So as you see, actually you see on the screen the same bracket model as, uh, as previously. So this time, this model contains constraints at the bottom surface. And load is applied on the top poles with the rigid elements. So let's perform simple static analysis to get the basic results. So now I'm going to analysis and let's perform the calculations and let's display the total deflection for our bracket. So as you see, uh, maximum deflection is around 10.28 millimeter and now we will start perform design design optimization size optimization excuse me for this uh, for this model. Uh, before we do that. Let's go back to the model, and now I will show you the properties for this bracket. So I will go to pre-mode, and I will show you the thicknesses for our bracket. So this model contains two thicknesses. The first thickness is one millimeter, and this is assigned for all surfaces except of the rib. So pink. Pink, super, uh, pink thickness has got one millimeter and white rib has got two millimeters. Okay, let's go back to analysis. And now uh, I'm going to show you only the procedure which is required to perform size optimization. We will provide you more details about this kind of analysis in the next specialized webinar. Okay, so first we have to do is defining the sensors. So as you see, we can define uh, many types of sensors. So we can create nodal sensors like displacements, velocity, acceleration, temperature sensors. We can also generate element sensors, which are related to the stresses, mass, volume, 
for example, uh, strains. And in this example, I'll use nodal sensor and let's say I will apply this sensor at this point. And of course, the component will be the X. So nodal sensor has been defined. The second step is the definition of the design variables. And as I then told you, we can assign some properties which can be varied according to the optimization. So we can use uh, material parameters as our variables and of course uh, thicknesses which comes from our properties. So I will use thickness number one with variable length range 10% and of course and for thickness number two I will add 50% of tolerance. So oh, excuse me. I will do this like that. So I just created the design variable table. So now I'm going to click OK. So it was the second step. And before we start the size optimization, the design sampling is required. So now I'm clicking on this icon. Let's add the name. So sampling. Sampling. And let's assign all parameters which are necessary to provide the sample. So first of all, we have to create the reference to our linear static. It's very easy. You, you can click on Add button and you can check and choose Node Sensor. So if you go many sensors, you can make your choice from this place. So now I'm clicking OK. The second step is the generation of the design table. Okay, so, but, but before that, I have to uh, assign the variables. So at this moment, uh, I have an access to sampling table. And at this moment, we have to specify number of sampling, sampling points. Uh, generally speaking, we are creating some experimental table with, uh, let, let's say, uh, with some sample thicknesses. So this table will be used for, uh, for our size optimizations. And of course, we can display the graph if we want with sampling points. We have this tool also. So actually everything is done at this moment. So let's perform the sampling calculation. So now I'm going to solve. And it will take a few seconds. So at this moment we received 10 um, solutions. But at this moment, nothing has been optimized. So we received only some sample results according to our design tape. So we can, we can display the results at this moment. And now, when we have this sampling solution, this sample results, we are able to prepare final size optimization analysis. So now I'm going to assign the name. So optimization. Let's call, let's call this optimization. We will use our design sampling case. Of course, all, all variables should be assigned to the design set. And now I'm going to optimization control because I have to uh, add the uh, objective function and I have to specify the constraints. So, of course, from this window I can request please give us all of outputs would be defined. So the, uh, my request is three. So we will receive three candidates for our solution. So, and at this moment, I'm uh, creating the objective function and I'm adding the constraint. So let's say the lower bound will be zero and the upper bound for constraint will be one. Okay. And I'm clicking okay. And at this moment, uh, I'm going to perform the calculations. So, okay, so the solution has been done. And as you see, we received three optimized solutions. And of course, some in, in, in according to the initial design. So let's display the results for the, for the linear static. So as you remember, the deflection was 10.28 millimeters. And now we can investigate our optimization results. So uh, the total deflection will be like 8.17. But I want to save this data and I want to see 
uh, what kind of thickness has got the, the, the property at this moment. So I'm going to update model option. I'm choosing size optimization. And we get the table with the result. So from this dialog box, we are able to select our candidates, our optimized solution. So let's say I want to save candidate number one. We can uh, provide a model file, file path if you want. And let's click on OK button. So as you see, optimized model has been generated. And if we go to the model, and if we expand the property branch, now we are able to check what kind of properties we received. So uh, the property for all the bracket was one millimeter. So now it's changed to 1.1. And as you remember, the rib was two millimeters. So at this moment, uh, the thickness equals to one. So actually, the model has been optimized. OK, thank you, Kurt. Let's come back to presentation. So this was the presentation about the size optimization, which is a new optimization in NFF 2013. Now, we can't show all the new improvement because there's something like 100 improvements. Uh, but what, uh, uh, what Peter will uh, show you again are uh, two last improvements before. Uh, yes, I would like to uh, share with you a uh, few options which are related to the uh, post-processing. So at this moment, Sapien will uh, switch my screen once again. So first of all, one, oh, right now you see on the screen some uh, composite plate. So for this kind of, uh, of simulations, actually we provide new tool, which is called uh, through the thickness plot, fly of surfaces. And now we are able to display results across the thickness. So let's check, for example, this element. And we are working with the composite 3D model at this moment. So as you see, we are able to, 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 to display results for the thickness. So actually, you can choose some output vector which you are interested at this moment. And you can use this graph. And of course, you can create some text file with your results if you want. So this is the first improvement according to the composite materials. And let's take a look on the second example. So as you see, uh, we cannot display results for the beam elements and, and uh, shell elements in the same time because the topology of the elements is quite different. But anyway, we add this option. And now this will be possible, let's say, for, uh, for special kinds of output. Vector. So let's uh, display element counter plot. And as you see, we are able to check uh, output vectors for different types of materials. So now I will uncheck the solid. And let's assign the shell uh, result to shell, let's say, on Mises, bottom top ma maximum. And let's display, let's say, stress on Mises from for the beam. So if we click on the plot, you see both of the results are displayed at this moment. So this is the second example. Of course, we add some option which is called result calculation. So for example, if you want to uh, display stress invariance, you can do that using this type of, uh, of tool because Midas and Edith cannot dis provide this uh, output directly. So you, are able, you, have to, uh, you have to calculate. So this is the tool. To do that, of course, stress linearization. This is another option. And local direction for some. So if you have uh, some 3D model, actually you can create a plane uh, across the, the model and display results across the plane. So this is a brief introduction to all the post-processing features. And now uh, we are going to back to the presentation once again. OK, thank you, Peter. OK, now we'll see. Uh, briefly what is coming next. So when I say coming next is in the few years, uh, because Minus NFX is a software which is improving a lot every year. And uh, I will tell you what is coming. So this is a development roadmap uh, about NFX. So in 2014, what we, 
what we'll add is the direct mesh and edit control, the GPU-based high-performance matrix calculation. So for those who don't know what is GPU, it's uh, the graphical processor unit. So it's actually the calculation of the, your FEM analysis using your graphic card. So as your graphic card is much more powerful than your CPU, uh, it improves a lot the speed of uh, analysis. Now another type of analysis uh, for optimization that will be added is the bead optimization and also size optimization will be uh, improved. Yeah. Now in 2015 we have uh, the plan to add the GPU-based high-performance dynamic uh, solver. So for explicit analysis, GPU will also be compatible. Uh, we'll add reliability analysis optimization, crash and damage models for materials. And finally, in 2016, we'll add the shape optimization as well, the noise and the sound analysis, the rotodynamics, and the high-performance dynamic analysis. So as you see, we have a big plan for the improvement of uh, minus effects. So now we'll go to the next section, which is uh, project application. So I will show you a few project applications which have been done with minus effects, actually by whole uh, clients. So we have uh, some project in every area, so it can be automotive industry, construction, consumer goods, electronics, equipment and machinery, materials and chemical, energy or medical uh, industry. So, first of all, let me show you an example about the analysis for car industry that we are uh, performing for Hyundai Motors. So, this is the uh, impact, low speed impact at the rear of a vehicle. So uh, using explicit analysis, you see a concentrated mass has been used to replace some parts of the model uh, to decrease the size of the model. Uh, also different stress strain curves have been used for the different parts of the vehicle. And this is the results, uh, the animation results of what uh, happens during the crash. So, as I told you, this is explicit dynamic analysis, uh, so nonlinear analysis. And you can see the damage which are, uh, which have been caused by this crash on your uh, car structure. So, it's Yes, this is a plastic deformation and it helps you to improve the and to make your vehicle more resistant. Now we have a lot of more uh, projects of, about, about uh, automobile industry and this is why we will perform a webinar which will be specialized for car industry analysis. Uh, we hope you will join also for this special webinar that we will send you the invitation later. Now another interesting model that has been performed by uh, X Solutions in uh, South Africa. Uh, this model has been provided uh, by us by uh, this company. So uh, they are using Midas and FX for uh, this analysis. And this, this, is, this analysis has been performed very uh, quickly. All the meshing of the structure has been done in uh, less than three hours. So you can think for such a big model, uh, three hours is really efficient. And the, all the, uh, the, let's say the point which was important was the buckling and nonlinear buckling of the structure. All that has been performed as well. So you have a picture on the right about this nonlinear buckling, uh, which helps you to design uh, and to prevent the failure of uh, the structure. Now another few models uh, that for uh, this kind of industry, the crane stability check, for example. Uh, so this is non-linear static, linear static analysis uh, using hybrid meshing. And 
this analysis also was performed very fastly with standards. We, we have also some a lot of product application on the electronic uh, goods industry, uh, like the TV panels, the LCD panels. Uh, so analysis of the thermal transfer and the stress distribution across the structure. So this is the thermal stress. You can check the deformation uh, due to this thermal stress. So this is very important to design uh, this type of equipment because they are very sensible to the heating of the uh, screen. And the deformation is a big problem. NSEC has been used as well for medical industry, medical equipment. So you can see this is a stair lift for old people. So NFX helped to design this system in order to make it safe uh, for the use of uh, And another area in which NFX is very uh, effective is the construction industry, more because uh, it can consider as well 1D, 2D and 3D elements and combine all that very efficiently. Uh, now we added also two new features which have, which are very useful for construction industry. One is the stress linearization, uh, which helps you to, to test for uh, this kind of model, the, the stress inside the structure. And another one is the size optimization we just presented to you today, uh, which helps to to design the size of the, all the plates and the elements in 2D to fit all the requirements. Now let's talk about the next events uh, we will perform in a few days. The first thing that uh, we will give you is the 60-day trial. So we thank you very much for attending this webinar and all the persons who attended this webinar will be given the 60 days trial of NFX 2013. So uh, this trial will be available on the 13th of June. Uh, so at this time we will send you the link to download the trial. If you uh, want to test it a bit before, we can still uh, send you NFX 2012 for testing the interface first. Now, a um, very important uh, thing is the technical webinar series that we will also uh, organize. So you are already invited and you can as well choose the topics which are interesting you. So these are a few lists of the topics, beginner, high-end or mid-level topics. And we prepared uh, one industry case about automotive industry. So at the end of this webinar, we have a small survey of uh, so it will only take two minutes to, to fill the, the survey, so it will be really helpful for us to set the topic webinar that we will uh, perform very uh, in a few days which are coming. So it will be at the beginning of July. We will also uh, provide some uh, case study on NFX website, which will be available uh, from uh, July. So this Staker Reclaimer model will be available for download. So you can download it and try it by yourself and see uh, how this analysis has been done using Midas and FX. So it will give you a good overview of uh, the type of uh, high-end analysis you can perform on it. And if you are on Twitter or on Facebook, uh, you can join Midas NFX as well. So here you have the link about uh, Midas NFX and Facebook. We provide also a lot of videos uh, of all kinds. So it can be webinar, tutorials, application demo, uh, user case, and much more on uh, my YouTube channel. So on the YouTube channel, you have all these videos. You have as well interviews of uh, people who are using Midas NFX. So you can see what uh, they are thinking about the software and have your own idea after all. And it's all for today's webinar. So uh, I would like to thank you very much for attending this webinar.
and we'll have a very short uh, question and answer session. Okay, I have a question about um, NFX interface itself. So how do you go from a designer mode to uh, the analysis mode? Uh, well, Piotr, can you show you that very quickly? Okay, so let me show you the designer mode of Midas NFX. So now I'm going to close all these models. So to switch between two modes of analysis, you have to go to this place in the interface. So if you want to use designer mode, actually we have to click, click on this icon. And as you see, all of this user graphic interface has been changed. And now let me show you the model environment. So as you see, um, this uh, user interface is divided into three tabs. So actually we have to work only with 3D geometry only. So this is our assumption that the designer will work only with the solid elements. But anyway, there is no access to all the manual, uh, let's say, setup of the mesh. So this is the first assumption. So let's import some path. Maybe I will use some model. Just give me a second. And let's display, let's say, this example. So we see a simple assembly model at this moment. So what is the workflow for the designer mode? Actually, it's very simple and it's restricted to the few, uh, let's say, clicks. So first of all, material has been already defined. So this is the first step. Okay. So how to assign the material in the designer mode? Actually, we are using drag and drop method. So as you see, it's very easy. But anyway, we have the one material, so I will create the second one. Midas NFX in designer mode has got uh, access to the library at this moment. And of course, I will create a material definition. And just to show you, I will assign the second material for the middle part. OK. The next step is the creating of the contact pair. So we can use the automatic contact feature. Let's check all of these parts. And I will assign the welded contact definition. And as you see, Midas Analytics created 12 contact pairs. So if you want to display this pair, we can double click on the model and we can investigate what kind of contact pairs has been created. OK. Let's go to the loading and boundary conditions and let's apply, let's apply boundary conditions. So we can use this left panel to assign boundary condition or maybe if you want, we can use this selection toolbar. So at this moment, I will change uh, this uh, selector to load and bandare. And so excuse me, to the face. And let's say I will select this face. And if we, I use the right click uh, button, I will have an access to the menu. And thanks to this menu, I will apply fixed constraints. I will do the same with the face with the top face on this part, and I will assign the start flow. So at this moment, I'm displaying the global coordinate system, and we will assign a force in the zeta direction, let's say minus 1,000 newtons. And at this moment, the model has been already prepared. So if you go to the analysis and case, 
analysis case, we can assign the uh, okay, some analysis type. So let's say it will be linear static and press the solve button. Of course, we have to save the model. And as you see, the mesh will be generated automatically at this moment. So there is no need to create mesh before the before the calculation process. Okay, so at this moment the model calculations has been made and we are able to display the results. So this environment is as you see very very simple and as I told you before, the is directed to the designer's own. So we are working with the 3D geometry and our results will be used as the pre-results pre -results for the more complicated types of analysis. And if you want to go in the analysis mode afterwards uh, to perform more complex anal analysis like adding a shell, for example, you can always change the analysis mode and switch so all the model will be converted to the analysis mode and it's possible to modify and to add uh, any type of uh, shell, mesh elements uh, to modify the geometry as well. Okay. Thank you, Piotr. Okay, do I have uh, other questions uh, before the end? Thank you very much again for attending uh, the webinar and uh, we hope to see you for our topic webinar. <laughs>